I'm just going to comment on the, some of the more intricate relationships of the fish in the pond. What you see here is um, one Paku and a uh, hybridized baby whose parents are also in here. He was born last year. That's his mother. Um, these two are really, really going to be the focus, the Paku. You notice this behavior. This, this is only thing we can assume is cichlid-like breeding behavior. They're attempting to establish the center of the tank. Uh, there's body rubbing, there's no violence, there's no hitting. Uh, they're, you know, dancing just like cichlids do, seeming trying to take the, the center of the pond as their, as their breeding ground. There's, the two fish are identifiable by the, if you look down their uh, dorsal ridge, the, uh, the one at the top of the screen now is missing the second dorsal fin and that one isn't. We call them Paco and Finny. I believe one of them is a female. I would assume the one on the right, being that it's more of a submissive animal. But they, they started doing this after a water change. Never, I've never seen anything like this, being that it, it's Paco breeding, or in my opinion, attempting to. Um, over the last eight months, these guys have started to do these behaviors in front of me. They have, in the beginning, I had to film them from a separate location. I couldn't be in the room, but this is all done by hand. It seems basic courting behavior now. This head to the top thing, I believe, is a spy hopping. Um, maybe not in this context here, but uh, in another later on, you'll see uh, the. There's a pack. I, we, my belief is that arowana actually function like a pack of dogs, a wolf pack. I'll show you in a minute. But um, these two attempting to take the center of the, the pond. They seem to be calm with one another. You know, they they haven't got, gotten along their whole life. We've raised them since they were about the size of a quarter, and uh, they, there were times where they didn't get along at all. It, whatever this is seems to be mutual. It's not one picking on another, you know, and it's a large body cavity and a smaller kerosene in my understanding you're supposed to have larger body cavity for a female smaller for a male all right and you see they're still like this is a the face rubbing sometimes they, they a lot of anabanthids do that um, looks like it just looks like cichlid dancing the, the two cichlids in the tank did the same thing you know they do the same thing and if you notice their arowana you have to really watch all four of them because it, it's it's unbelievable in my opinion that they could function this intricately but there's uh, here in a minute or, or two they'll actually break it up they, they're now dancing around they've, they've collected it I'll show you this is the alpha in my opinion is Gandalf look separation of the two so they can't breed and take his territory and he gets all of his other arowana now they're all gonna break it up and within a second, the entire center will be open and it'll be their territory again. And they will push everything back. The Paku have learned over the years of living with these guys, their only defense was, because Gandalf does this dorsal, um, his pec fins down this uh, alpha posture is what I call it. And he would ram the Paku in their side. So now the Paku have developed, look, they lay on their sides so that he has no target. So that's how they, look, that is, that's unbelievable. They. That's a learned behavior in just in these two animals. I mean, I'm sure they all can do that, but, you know, in no other circumstance in the wild would they be so tightly contained with these other animals and be so visible. That's the, the, that is one of the downfalls is that this is not their natural environment due to the, the clarity. You know, Paku are already flighty and I have this. That's the spy hopping thing, I believe, in a submissive pose or a submissive posturing. They do this where they angle their head up when they're around the, I don't know if it's just easier to be able to flatten themselves to dodge a, you know, a territorial dispute. There's never a mark on any of them though. It's all just posturing and body body language. Here, that's the uh, <laughs> in-house dog. He does all the cleanup, but they push on him too. Now look, the, the body posturing on the, on the right-hand side, see the, the his pack fins. Oh, that right there. See it on the right? That's his, that's the, the alpha status. He's reclaimed the entire territory. Now the Paku won't come back to the middle. They're back on the edges. They're doing the spy hopping thing. 
He passes back through, and look at him, one right after another. He touches the large female a lot. He, uh, he, they make the arowana make an unbelievable amount of body. Look at this. The, they, every time they pass one another, they make some sort of physical contact. Um, every one of them's got their own little role. There's, I believe, there's a, the one in the middle now is Gandalf, the largest. No question, he's the male. There's another larger one that I believe is a large female, and then I have another a smaller male, a smaller female, and they all play the same role. You, you'll notice a lot of the same body posturing out of a smaller male that you get out of. Look at that, dodge them. It's unbelievable. And some of the fish have no impact on the social structure whatsoever. That Oscar, it's like it's not even there. The cichlids don't bother it. It doesn't bother anybody. That's the smaller male at the top. I'll start his thing. That's the smaller female coming through. That's Arlen. That's Gandalf. It's the Alpha. Now watch. Look, the minute he comes close, they flatten themselves as to not be able to be a target. I think here in a second he does some more posturing. You can actually see he arches his back. That's his female. The one he, he constantly makes contact with. And Paku are totally separated now. They had their fun. He said no. Now he's got everybody on Sentinel. And then keep it broke up. And I don't... I mean, our original intention was to be able to breed silver arowana in this thing. But, you know, it's... It's just not enough space. That's Cloud. That's the largest female. I'm Just because of the shape of her body. I know the males carry the eggs and the young. And if you look at the jaw structure on this one, it's head rounded and bottom jaw doesn't seem to have much uh, cavity to it but if you look on the male there in the bottom you can see her to a, a car cat there's a large one there's a smaller one on the males you can see a much larger pouch it's my assumption if you watch him watch his pec fins on the right there as he comes up to the two paku and he puts his pec fins out and, oh man that is alpha dog posture that's like a Cry the lions. That's, that's any other major predator on the planet with a social structure. He's a family group. He is a, a conscious. Look at the posturing at the top. I told you, and they're stuck. They, they have nothing to do. They just sit and watch them intently because they have no escape. And it's, it's, in my opinion, as long as they're not physically being harmed, it, it, it's a better housing than they would have. I would, you know, I'd rather have, you know, whatever. But this is a year-long project to get this and they've already grown to the almost outgrown it and this is their relationship with me which is everything changes he's Gandalf's always first to eat anything the arowana will cut the other animals off of the food supply I am viewed as that but Gandalf still postures to me too and, uh, another little boy look that's what he now actually this was me teasing him to show that he's he's getting real good on his jump reflex Everyone's constantly concerned about them jumping. You know, arowanas are jumpers, but they, they're content in their environment and they're fed properly. You know, these guys don't have that, they say the drop eye either. No, they've all been fed surface food. They, you know, they get birds and see the contact with this female. That's so amazing. Um, yeah, they have no need to jump. I weigh them down is what I call it. These guys always have food and they do, they get hand fed, they get fed off tongs, they do jump, but they never jump out. Well, first thing is there's a piece of Lexan on that side, and an animal that can understand the social structure as complex as the one you're seeing can understand that that's on the other side of the Lexan and that that's not water. In my opinion, they understand the difference. And that's why I don't, they never jump out. You see how open it is? That's the large placosum, so there, it's about 18 and a half inches. That's the smaller Akara. We put that in at six inches, and Bagheera is the bigger one. She took it and never let anybody mess with it. Sher Khan, the tiger shovel nose, he, he is Sher Khan. He's a little baby Akara cat named Mowgli. It's very fitting. Down here, you'll see the, you can see the Trimac and the Mida sickle too. That's Yankee and, and Bernie. Those are the two that created the flower horns. Two flower horn babies from last year are still in there. The one small female uh, right there beside the Trimac. She just lays there by her dad. I don't know if he's trying to breed her too, but and uh, that other male flower horn's gone off rogue. He just wanders. 